Hello everyone, it's Kerry here at the Northeast Autism Society and I am joined by Tony and Davey from the Life Science Centre. And, and today we're going to be doing some investigations use it with some wood lice. So Tony, could you tell us a little bit more about what we're going to be doing today? Yeah, so I know lots of our young people are very keen on animals and curious about animal behaviour. Mm -hmm. We've met some of their pets already. Um, but I was thinking there are animals out there that we can work with and learn from, um, even if you don't have any pets. So I had a look out in my garden and turned over some stones and found lots and lots of wood lice. There they are. We can use wood lice to do um, some quite interesting experiments. I thought of a question that I wanted to know about wood lice and then I thought about how I can do a scientific investigation to find my answer with the wood lice's help. Um, so my question is, do wood lice prefer light or dark habitats? Do they prefer to be somewhere nice and bright or somewhere hidden away and dark? So one thing that scientists always like to do at the beginning of an experiment is to try and make a prediction. So does anyone want to have a guess at what they think will happen? They predict mm. what the answer will be. Will they prefer I dark or light? I predict, just thinking about the behaviour of wood lice when I've seen mm -hmm. them, I predict it'll be a dark, they will prefer the dark place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too, because because when I've seen wood lice, usually they're under something. And then if you lift that something, usually they scuttle away. So I'm guessing that they don't like being in the light as much, but I don't know if that's right. Yeah, so these are good predictions that are based on things that you've seen before, your your observations that you've made before. Now, I've sometimes seen wood lice out in the light, though, as well. So, of course, there's another possible answer is that perhaps they don't mind. Perhaps they like light and dark. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say I'm not sure. And that's an OK thing to say at this point in the experiment, too. So if you want to try this at home, what you'll need to do is go out into your garden and find some wood lice. Now, David, you had a look this morning for some wood lice. Where yeah. did you find yours? So I found my wood lice um, under some pots in the garden. Ah. So, oops. <laughs> so there's a, probably about 20 wood lice there. And some of, them are, some of them are bigger than other ones. So I'm guessing some of them are adults and some of them are younger. Brilliant. That's another really good observation. So what we've actually got here is something else that's happening. We, we'll also have to think about whether we, we might see a pattern in what the old wood lice do compared to the young wood lice. That's worth bearing in mind. There's an extra variable, we call them in science, something else that is different in our uh, experiment. So you found some under the pot in your garden. I found some um, by turning over a brick that was on the floor and found some under there. So if you want to look for some, those kind of places can be good places to have a look. Um, and the most important thing is to make sure that you look after your wood lice during this experiment. So we were very careful picking them up. If you, if you don't like picking them up with your hands, you might find someone else who can help you with it. Or if you're very, very gentle, you could even use a spoon and let them crawl onto a spoon and lift them up that way so you can transfer them. But do be very, very careful if you're using anything like a spoon. Um, because the most important thing is at the end of the experiment, we can take our wood lice back out into the garden and put them back where we found them so they can go back because they might have busy things they might be busy might have things to do today so we want to make sure they're happy and back in their normal habitat once we finished so i wanted to investigate light or dark and i can see david you've got something there that you can use to cover up part of your um wood louse um yeah pot it's, it's, a, it's a, a coaster a mat for a mm -hmm. you just for your dining table Brilliant. OK, and I had an old pizza box that I've made a little cover for that I can sit on top of my box just like this as well. So we've made one side dark by covering it up and then the other side I'm going to make light by turning on. I'm using my mobile phone torch, but you could use a torch. You might have a desk lamp. You might have someone who can stand and hold the torch for you as well. I, I'm using this little uh, tripod because I don't have an extra pair of hands to, this morning, but I'm going to put that there. Now, what's important is that we haven't changed anything else. Our only variable is light or dark. So we have everything is the same temperature. It's the same, um, you know, there's nothing in there. There's no food in there to tempt them from one end to the other. We've kept everything else same. So these are our control variables. These, this is what we, we do in an experiment. So we've got our prediction. We've 
got our wood lice, we've know our method, we've set up our equipment. So um, now all we have to do is wait. But what I've noticed is that at first they all moved to the light first. They all moved straight away to the other end. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not sure. Um, because it's quite light in the room and the, the box I've got them in is white, I'm not sure if it's dark enough to make a difference, even though I've got a torch sitting okay. on top. I'm not sure if it's dark enough to mm -hmm. make a difference. I think what I might do is I might try and put something else at the side here that's darker, mm -hmm. so it makes it a wee bit, gives a better impression of it being dark, so I'll see what else I can find. There's yeah, no. sometimes what you can do as well is you could go into a room in the house that's a bit darker and switch off the lights and, and pull the curtains so it's quite dark in the surroundings, and that way the only light that's really coming is, is from your torch. So that's another another thing you might want to try if it doesn't work the first time. And this is all a really important part of the experiment is working out how you can improve the design of your experiment and set up your equipment better. And this is something scientists learn as they go along. I'm having to use my glasses to balance my torch on as well. Which is <laughs> an, unusual, an unusual use of glasses, but there you go. <laughs> I think that shows though, Davy, as well, that you don't necessarily need expensive science equipment and materials, do you, for these, these little um, investigations? You can just no. use some things that you have already in the house, which is good. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. we love a bit of creative problem solving. That's a really important skill for scientists as well. Mm -hmm. So we love that, definitely. Welcome back everybody. Um, we've left the wood lice for about five minutes and I'm just going to have a look at Tony's wood lice to see what they've been doing. So could you show us there Tony? Ah, so you can see that most, well you've still got a few in the light but I think, I think most of them have gone into the dark. So I think most of your wood, li wood lice um, chose the dark side. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. So you had five in the dark and one, two, three, four in the light. So Oh, I think there were actually I found one more. There's a sixth one in the uh, on the dark side, but it had uh, it was having a ride on the back of the other one. There's a little tiny one that was getting hitching a ride on an adult one. So there okay. was six in the dark and four in the light. Right. Mm. So Davy, what about your wood lice? Mm. Mine's is a bit of a desres. So mine's is very changeable. And I would say that they're still moving about too much. So mm -hmm. um at this moment there probably looks like what well, I would have said is more in the dark than in the light, but I think it's interesting as I'm quite close to the tub because this side of the tub is actually darker than this side of the tub because there's more of a there's like a shadow from the table that's close to me. And I can see that, that there's more at this corner. But when I take, if I was to take this away, you would, I don't think you would be convinced at all that they, they, they had made a decision of where to go. I think it's, I think I had about 20 uh, wood lice in the first place and they're mm -hmm. kind of all over the place. Now, I wouldn't have said there was particularly a pattern, but there may be slightly more in the dark, but oops, not much at all if I. Okay, so it sounds like there's perhaps a little more that we can do to try and make sure that our dark areas um, in the tub really are as dark as they can be. And so perhaps that would mean going into a darker room so that the only light was coming just from your torch rather than having daylight in your conservatory or having white a bit of light coming in the window as I've got here. So I think that could be one way we could improve. And this is one really important thing about um, when you're looking at your experiment is to think about ways you could improve it for next time. So my findings seem to just about match that the wood lice preferred the dark, which is what Kerry and David both predicted. Um, and that does kind of make sense when we think about the habitats we try and we normally find them in. They normally are in um, dark places, hidden under the pots or hidden under the rocks. So that's a that's a really good thing as well. Now it would be it would be really interesting if some some of the younger people did this though, and they did it for more than five minutes, and maybe they did it for. 10 minutes or half an hour and see if it made a difference because I think just now we're not seeing an awful big difference but maybe if they had more time and they could do it for longer they might get different results than we've got. 
Yeah, I agree. I think if our young people could try that and send us some pictures or videos, perhaps, um, and, or maybe write your findings down on a piece of paper and send us that, that'd be brilliant because we'd love to, love to see how they get on. When you finish your wood lice experiment, don't forget to take them back outside where you found them. When you finish handling the wood lice, don't forget to wash your hands. So I think what would be a really good idea is if the young people sent in the, the videos and pictures of how they get on with that experiment, because we'd love to see um, if your findings match what, what we predicted or if they don't. Um, Tony, have you got any other ideas of what we could, what we could be looking for? One thing I was wondering um, is whether the wood lice prefer an habitat that's a bit moist or whether they prefer one that's dry. So I was thinking I could put a wet paper towel or a wet piece of kitchen paper in the bottom of one half of my tub and leave the other half dry and see if they prefer the damp part or the, the dry part. Um, I wonder there's lots of different ideas that you might have as, of things you can investigate. And as long as you can do it keeping the wood lice safe, then you can investigate. I know when I when I lifted caps of these uh, wood lice that were underneath a pot, underneath below the pot as, as well were some small stones, some small pebbles. And what I noticed was that some of the wood lice what had when I was lifting the, the small stones, they were actually attached to the, the pebble, you know, they were holding onto the pebble. I wonder if you put a, a pile of pebbles in the tub and then, you know, I bet they didn't have pebbles and if they would all gravitate to the pebbles. Just mm -hmm. Mm. It did make me think when I was lifting them, actually they were they were holding on to it because the colours of them are quite light, the colour of pebbles, so I thought maybe they were thinking they were camouflaged, but I might be wrong. Ah, I love that as a prediction, it's a great hypothesis there, it's something you can test out, definitely. Yeah, so there's some really good ideas there of things we can test out. And obviously, if our young people have any ideas of their own, we would love to see them as well. Um, and if people have got any questions specifically about wood lice as well, then get in touch with us. So we're going to leave, um, leave it there and we shall see you all again very soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.